All right, hey everyone. I'm here to talk to you about GOSS, which is a server validation tool. It's a lot like server spec and inspec if you've used them. Uh, it's basically to validate that certain packages are installed, ports are listening, and basically to make sure your server is configured the proper way. So who am I? I'm the author of GOSS, as uh, James mentioned. He asked if I was interested in presenting, and um, I said yes, and signed up right away. Uh, and then I found out it was a lightning talk, and apparently you get 15 seconds per slide, and it auto advances. Well, no matter how many times I practice this, I failed miserably at it. I can't do slides. Um, so the day before the slides were due, I basically redid the slides from scratch and decided I'm just going to do a live demo instead. Uh, but I'm going to do it using slides because it's the only way I know how to present. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> so the way that it's going to work is, um, and, but this works really well for Goss because it's a tool that needs to be shown to really appreciate. So um, the focus is on simplicity and the ease of use. And the idea is you can teach somebody how to use it, and within minutes they can be productive with it. And hopefully by the end of this talk, you guys will know how to use Gauss. So um, we'll start with the very first step. You need to install it. So uh, the very first step is to just do that one-liner to install Gauss. Now, I'm sure there's some security folks that are shaking their heads in disappointment. <laughs> Don't do that on a production box. Download the binary, uh, make it executable, and put it in your path. Uh, the binary is only 10 megabytes. It's actually less than 10 megabytes, so it's really quick download. There are no other external dependencies, so you don't have to have Ruby or Python or anything installed on your server. Once you install Gauss, you're ready to write your first test. Um, Gauss takes a slightly different approach to writing tests in that if you can test a system state, then you can also derive that system state. So you can do something like Gauss add package nginx, and it spits out your YAML test file that says, hey, I want nginx to be installed, and I want it to be this version. Now, you can write that test file from scratch. You can do that yourself. But Goss kind of gives you that helper to be able to generate that quicker. Um, also, once you do the Goss add package nginx, you can go in there with an editor and say, hey, I don't really care that version 1.11 is installed. I just care that nginx is installed. So there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Now, if you like Goss add or if you think that's, that's useful, Goss auto add takes it uh, one level higher. So basically what ends up happening with Goss Auto Add is in one command, Goss Auto Add Nginx, you're getting a test suite that tests that the package is installed, that port 80 is listening, that the service is running, users and groups are there, and that's a great start for something that takes a second to do, and then from there you can tweak your test however you like, add to it, remove from it, and so on. Now, um, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. Like I said, the 15 second thing doesn't work for me. Um, <clears throat> once you have your test suite, the next thing you're ready to do is validate your, uh, your server. So that's GOS validate. Uh, that test suite running on my laptop takes 23 milliseconds. It's another perk of GOS is that it's near instantaneous for small to test, uh, to medium test suites. You're looking at under 100 milliseconds. Uh, when it fails, it spits out a little bit more information there. There are also different output formats. So it supports Nagios and a few other formats um, if you don't like the default fake RSpec output there that uh, that it uses. Now, how do you do this in Docker? Well, there's a wrapper that comes with the GOS called DGOS. Uh, when you do a DGOS edit nginx, it'll spin up your Docker container, drop you in an interactive shell, and in there you can do your GOS add or your GOS auto adds. Once you're done with that, you exit out, it copies your GOS YAML back to your host system, and then instead of running Docker run the container name or the image name, you do DGOS run the image name, and it'll spin up the image, validate it, and shut it back down. So that's how you bring GOS simplicity to uh, Docker. Uh, some limitations, it only uses, uh, it only supports Linux, so if you're not on Linux, sorry. Uh, some of the package managers and services that come in are just the more common ones. And um, it does support custom commands, so you can hook in a lot of other things to uh, GOS. Uh, some other features that in demo is uh, you can serve your test results as a health endpoint. Uh, it supports caching so that you're not taxing the system when you do that. It also supports things like loops, conditionals. Um, you can do uh, logic. Uh, and or logic and uh, numeric comparisons. There's also functionality to uh, do a sleep retry loop. So instead of just validating that your server is in a certain state, you can wait for it to get into that state before pro proceeding with another step. Um, I think that's all I have. Uh, Goss.rocks is the website, or you can search Goss on GitHub. If GitHub crashes on you, control, delete, clears it right up. And uh, you can Google uh, test Docker in half a second, or just uh, go to LinkedIn and uh, you can find me there. If you have any questions, you can find me floating around. Thank you.